Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this, and share these videos with anyone else studying for the CCNA. In this lab, we will troubleshoot HSRP. The correct configurations should be identical to the previous lab. However, a couple of misconfigurations have been made. I'll open up R1 here. And you can see it's displaying the same error message over and over again. We are also told in the instructions that R2 doesn't retake its role as the active router for VLAN 20 after recovering from a failure. Let's take a look at this error message. Duplicate address 10.10.10.1. That's the virtual IP address used for VLAN 10. This error message can often occur when there are misconfigurations between the two routers that cause them not to recognize each other as an active standby pair. So both routers claim to be the active router, thus resulting in a duplicate address. In this case, PCs in VLAN 10 will still be able to use the virtual IP address. However, whether they go via R1 or R2 depends on which replies to the ARP request faster. Just to make it easier to work, I'll stop these messages from being displayed. Enable Terminal No Monitor. If I didn't do that, the messages would keep appearing every few seconds and make things difficult to see. Let's check the HSRP configuration. Show standby, and since the error message is for VLAN 10, I'll just show G01, the interface for VLAN 10. R1 is claiming to be the active, which it should be in our configuration. You can see the priority is 110. Let's check on R2. Enable Terminal No Monitor. Show Standby G02. So R2 is also claiming to be the active router. What's causing this? Let's look at the two side by side. Did you notice the problem? R2 is using version 2, as it should. However, R1 is not. It's still using version 1. Let's fix that on R1. Conf T, interface G01, standby version 2. OK, I'll wait here for 10 seconds or so to let them work things out, and then let's check if R2 is the standby. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. Let's check out R2. Show standby G02. There we go, state is standby. I'll try a trace route from PC1 to the external server, just to confirm it takes the path via R1. Trace route 15.0.0.0. Perfect, it's going via R1 at 10.10.10.2. So we've solved the problem here on R1. I'll enable the syslog messages on R1 and R2 again, since those error messages should have stopped. On R1 first, end, terminal monitor. Okay, now let's do the same on R2. End, Terminal monitor. Okay, now let's investigate what's up on VLAN 20. Show standby gig01. So R2 is currently the active router for VLAN 20, but we're told in the lab instructions that it doesn't retake its role as active router when it recovers from a failure. Actually, I don't even need to troubleshoot anything here. If you come across a problem like this, the issue is preemption. Actually, it says right here, preemption disabled. If preemption is disabled, 
the active router won't take back its role as the active router if it fails and then recovers. It will become the standby router. The configuration instructions say that preemption should be enabled, however, so let's do that. Conf T, interface G01, standby 20, preempt. Do show standby G01. There we go, preemption enabled. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.